السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the special embryology lectures and the development of the foregut I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the development of the Didinum and pancreas I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansour University, Egypt To start with the Didinum In this side view of a sagittal section of an embryo, you can notice the developing gastrointestinal tract here. So, the duodenum is derived from this area, which is the lower part of the foregut up to the entrance of the bile duct, and the upper part of the midgut from the bile duct to the beginning of the jejunum. Here in this picture, you can see the stomach, the termination of the foregut, the entrance of the bile duct, the beginning of the midgut. Here you can also see that the loop of the GIT is suspended to the posterior abdominal wall by the dorsal mesentery. So, the duodenum grows as a C-shaped loop. It is convex ventrally and concave dorsally. So here we can see the C-shaped duodenum. It is attached ventrally by the ventral mesodenum to the anterior abdominal wall and dorsally with the dorsal mesodenum to the posterior abdominal wall. Then the C-shaped duodenum rotates with the rotation of the stomach. So it rotates in a clockwise direction to the right side. In this cross section, you can see the duodenum and it is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by the mesodenum. But after its rotation, 90 degrees clockwise, its mesodenum is pressed against the posterior abdominal wall and soon disappears. Thus, the duodenum is now a retroperitoneal structure. And as any other tube, at first its epithelial lining will proliferate to obliterate the lumen completely, and then vacuoles appear. Then recanalization takes place again. If there is alteration in this process, this will lead to duodenal stenosis. If there is improper recanalization, while failure of recanalization will lead to duodenal atresia. So, in summary, the duodenum is derived from both the foregut and midgut. And the limitation between these two areas is the entrance of the bile duct. It first elongates to form a C-shaped tube with a convex surface ventrally and a concave surface dorsally. Then it rotates with a stomach rotation 90 degrees in a clockwise direction. Its dorsal mesodenum disappears, thus it becomes a retroperitoneal structure. Its epithelium proliferates to obliterate the lumen, then recanalization takes place afterwards. Then we'll talk about the development of pancreas. In this picture, we can see the developing GIT. This dilatation represents the stomach, and here is the developing duodenum. This is the entrance of the bile duct into the duodenum. So, uh, the pancreas develops from the endodermal lining of the duodenum as two buds. The dorsal bud grows into the dorsal mesentery, while the ventral bud grows into the ventral mesentery caudal to the pile duct. So in this cross section, this circle represents the duodenum. This tube represents the pile duct. And here we can see the two pods. This is the ventral pod and this is the dorsal pod. 
The ventral pod rotates in a clockwise direction to fuse with the dorsal pod. It rotates almost 180 degrees. Also, with the rotation of the duodenum, the pancreas rotates with it in a clockwise direction and adheres to the posterior abdominal wall and becomes a retroperitoneal structure. Like this. Finally, the ventral bud lies caudal and posterior to the dorsal bud and the form the antenate process and the part of the head of the pancreas, while the dorsal bud will give us the rest of the pancreas. The main pancreatic duct arises from the dorsal and the ventral pancreatic ducts, while the accessory pancreatic duct arises from the terminal part of the dorsal pancreatic duct. So if we revise the anatomy here, this C-shaped structure is the duodenum. This is the first part, second part, third part, and fourth part. Uh, in the middle of the second part of the duodenum, the main pancreatic duct together with the common pile duct enter the duodenum at the site of the major duodenal papillae here. So this is the main pancreatic duct and this is the common bile duct. They both open into the major duodenal papilla. Just above it lies the minor duodenal papilla where the accessory pancreatic duct opens into the duodenum. Regarding the anomalies of the pancreas, we can have what's called the annular pancreas or ring-shaped pancreas. Um, in this anomaly, there is a ring of pancreatic tissue that surrounds the duodenum, and it may compress the duodenum and causes GIT obstruction. The causes of it probably could be due to the following: the ventral pancreatic pod arises as two branches instead of one and each branch of the ventral bud rotates in opposite directions to each other so we end up with a ring surrounding the duodenum. Another explanation the ventral bud arises as one but it hypertrophies and it is fixed in its place but just hypertrophies to reach the dorsal uh, bud thus forming a ring around the duodenum. The other kind of anomalous is called hypertrophic pancreatic tissue. In this anomaly, we can end up with accessory pancreatic tissue can be found at different sites. Like here in this picture, you can see it in, uh, inside the spleen, um, around the umbilicus, in the ileum, at the pillory system, at the appendix, and even at the lungs and it is of unknown reason. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you like it. If you do, please leave a comment and do not forget to subscribe, like and share.